friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 24 of A Friend to Knit With podcast. Today is Monday, March 28th, and it is very much still winter here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I live, and it is snowing and blustery and very cold outside, and it's perfect for knitting. Hopefully it's perfect for knitting wherever you are too, and this is a channel mostly about knitting if you've stumbled upon this. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I'm glad we're friends to knit with. I can be found on Instagram as Leslie Friend. I am friend to friend on Ravelry and my blog name is a friend to knit with. Although my blog does need to be dusted off a bit. I have not been over there writing since January. If you watched my previous podcast or if you follow me on Instagram, I post about it all the time over there, but I broke my wrist um, February 25th, I mean January 25th, and I had surgery February 4th um, on my wrist. So I wasn't able to do anything as far as knitting or typing or anything or use my fingers for five and a half weeks, but I did get the green light and I about two and a half weeks ago and it was a bit challenging um, not as challenging as many people are facing right now obviously but you know if you're as passionate about knitting as I am and I think you are that that is the peace and the calm during the day that you so you know need to settle into and I didn't quite have that at the beginning and it was quite challenging at the beginning. My little tagline over on my blog is my day is not complete without a little bit of knitting. And I truly believe that to be true. I don't just say that I live that. And uh, yeah, I went five and a half weeks without knitting. So I know you know, but I did end up being able to settle into it. And I'll share this amazing book that I read uh, that really helped me with that. I'll share that later. But I don't have much to show you, but I did make something. I have a finished object and I have another finished object to show you that I didn't make. So at least I have two things. But I, when I first started knitting again, small needles were a little just too small for my fingers were very weak to hold and the bigger needles were a little more clumsy and they were too hard to hold too and i found the sweet stop spot to be between seven and nine i have always loved us sevens mm, those really i think are my favorite needles to knit with but so i had this cast on from i think it was september I had just done a little bit of ribbing on this. I didn't exactly have it charted out as what I wanted to make. I knew I wanted to make a vest, but I decided to just sit down with this. And at the beginning, I could only knit like five stitches at a time, but I ended up getting through and making a whole vest. But it is, here, I'll stand up and show you. It's, it's I don't have a pattern for it. And uh, you, I, I just want to encourage you that you could probably do this too. And I promise you, you can. Hopefully I can inspire you to try. But it is just, so I like it, you know. I know my magic numbers, as Andrea Mowry said. And if you know your magic numbers, which means you know the measurements of the sweater that you like best on your body, then you truly can make anything. It's just, if you know how to knit and purl, I say this all the time, you can do it. But so I cast on, well, I can't remember exactly how many I cast on, but what I did was I took the, so you have to do a gauge when you do this. You, so you do your gauge and you get your stitches per inch and you have your measurement of, you know, how, how round, how, how wide you want it to be and you just measure, you multiply the, the gauge per inch by the, you know, by the width that you want it. So let's say, you know, you wanted it to be 30 inches wide and your gauge was five, you would cast on 150 stitches. So then you take that 
And so my magic number, the, what I like from the bottom to uh, my underarm is 12 inches. So you, I just knit for 12 inches. And then, and I knit in the round. I also like to put a faux seam in on either side by just purling the stitch in between the front and the back on the seams. And that just gives the illusion of a seam on the side. And then you can separate and do some decreases on your arms for the arms. Vests are the easiest thing to do. I used to make vests for my daughter a lot, so that's why I know. But you do those and then, so then you would also know what you like for your armhole. I like a more fitted armhole than a deeper one. Do you might like deeper? So whatever you like and then, you know, the. I did short rows on the shoulder and I did a seam. You can do a three needle. You can just try whatever you want though, as far as finishing, as far as short rows, whatever technique you like, it really is not hard. So I used to do this for my daughter uh, when she was young and I knew her magic numbers. And then I would make a fair aisle vest and you can just change the stitches. You could do anything you want. And I kind of forgot about doing that. I kind of got away from it, but as I was, you know, dreaming of my next project and I was ordering yarn, I have some yarn to show you, but I didn't, everything seemed to have something I didn't want in it. And I knew also that I wanted a vest for the spring. And so there you go, there you have it. And I didn't want it to be mohair. I wanted to maybe be able to wear this in the summer without anything under it or maybe just a t-shirt uh but i used dapple by brooklyn tweed because it's merino and cotton organic cotton and the lot it's it might be the lightest yarn i have ever felt really it is just like air and it's a it's a two ply and this color is the natural color. And I just think that Beth, while I was knitting this, I just kept saying, hello friend, hello friend. You know, as I was like re being reacquainted with my knitting. And then it dawned on me that this garment is like something I wore when I was younger. And I was like, oh, hello friend. I don't know, it's just very, but look, I'm gonna cry over it. <laughs> it was very moving. So it was very moving to be reacquainted with my netting. Mm. And to, I tell my kids this, I'm like, thank your hands, they do so much for you. And I knew that because, I mean, I, I think I realized, well, not having a hand, but when you have a hand that does all the work, then I kept thanking my hand for doing all the work. And then I kept apologizing to my other hand for putting it through such drama. <laughs> so anyhow, thank your hands because they really are amazing. And because of your hands, you can get through these beautiful projects and you can, you know, get through your days. And yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. So anyhow, this was the finished object, but I do encourage you, and I really, I would help anyone that wanted to try because it's very rewarding and it is, you know, just something that you can have that is all yours. And if you have children, you could try it on them first. Um, I, I knew how to do it because I made many best for my daughter when she was younger. Okay, anyhow, my other finished object is not finished by me. My friend Kim sent me these amazing wrist warmers. They are the Cozy Hand Warmers by Church Mouse, and they are in Lang's Cashmere Light Yarn. Oh my gosh, they are so luxurious. And Kim, thank you so much. Oh, I, when I opened the box, my husband and I were like, oh, he was squeezing them as much as I was. They are, and this just feels so good on my wrist. This is dreamy, dreamy yarn. And 
you know, as a hat or just accessories. This, oh, so, so yummy. Okay, and do you have a piece of paper there and a pencil? Do you do that when you watch podcasts? I always, I'm always, I learn things and I'm jotting things down all the time. But Kim told me, because I've made many, you know, mitts, the toast mitts, which I actually prefer the, to round, I mean, when they roll down and roll up. But this pair, I just think looks so nice laying flat. And to do that, Kim cast on with the cable cast on, right Kim, cable cast on. And then when she bound off, she knit through the back of the loop. So she did a standard bind off, but knitting through the back of the loop. Oh, the heater just clicked off. Maybe you can hear me better. Uh, and that made both lay flat, which is so nice. Oh, thank you, Kim. I just adore these. My husband, you know, loved them so much and was squeezing away. And so I think I'm going to make him a pair. Kim said this took two skeins. So it is quite a lovely gift. And um, mm, they're dreamy. We cannot love them more. This yarn really is just... So, all right, those are my only two, my one finished object and my friend's finished object. But uh, I do have some things on the needles, a couple new things, and then I have some yarn that I purchased while I was, uh, and I wanna show you how I organize it. But, all right, I'm gonna show you this bag, but I don't, it's, I, I just wanted to mention that I'm into bucket bags now, just bags that sit like next to me. This bag, was not a knitting bag. It's just a purse that I, or a bag that I bought at a store not too far from me. And I love it. She is trying to get more of these bags and, you know, hopefully she will. I will let anyone know that has reached out to me um, because it is just a fantastic knitting bag as well. And then this is my other bag, which I just adore. This is a shaggy baggy, and it is very simple. There's nothing, no pockets or anything inside. I just love how it sits, you know, next to me and has these beautiful little leather cord handles. And I have designated this to hold my baby projects. I have started a baby blanket for a gift. And this is a butterfly. I don't know if you have ever done these little butterfly stitches, but my grandmother made this blanket striped in the striped version. And my sister's been making just solid versions of it. And I decided I would too. So it's just a simple garter. And then you periodically do the butterfly stitch and I am using the big twist it's 100% acrylic I love acrylic blankets for babies I'm sorry I just do they can wash them dry them they can drag them on the under the stroller you know they're just indestructible and then I, I I do know a lot of people having babies now all of a sudden I guess they're grandbabies um but I decided I have a lot of the Baby Cash Merino by Debbie Bliss yarn in my stash. That is a really cute little hat. And then I'm gonna make matching boots or matching socks. But anyhow, I was gonna keep all of my, this pattern goes over there, all of my baby projects in this bag keep it next to me. And in this bag is usually my sweaters. This is for my exercises. <laughs> Watch it. This is like my home PT when I don't go. He has me doing, uh, he wanted me to hold a pen, you know, and do the opening the wrists. And uh, I use a knitting needle, of course. So this is my daily pullover. And I made one of these in black, if you've seen them. A lot of other people have made them. 
Um, I know both the girls on Caddy Jacks have made them and I've seen quite a, quite a few of these. The, the yarn is the same as the half and half triangles wrap. It's the linen quill and it just makes a great sweater. It's the drape is so nice, so nice. And this is the top and I just separated last night while watching the Oscars. And how about, I'm not gonna say that part, Will Smith, that part. How about during a speech when he said that his mother wasn't at the Oscars because she was with her knitting group? I was like, mm-hmm, that's where I would be too. <laughs> so this is separated here. I have about six more rows and then I'm gonna join for the body. And then it's literally just, Mindless knitting, which I am actually kind of craving something that is not as mindless. Um, but I couldn't really do any stitches or anything. Casting on is still a little bit difficult because of the way you, you uh, I guess, rotate your wrist. So that is a little difficult, but the actual knitting, so easy. And I'm only doing my English style, which English style knitting, your right hand does most of the work. I, I've realized there's just, I would not have been able to do any continental knitting for a while. So while I was waiting though, I did buy some yarn and we had a little bit of a moth problem with one of my pro projects. I went to, I, it was a project I started that well, I was going to frog and I never frogged it and it was just sitting in the bag and it was a hundred percent baby camel. And when I went to go through that bag, I noticed some holes in the knit part of my sweater. <laughs> so I pretty much freaked out and have been bagging yarn like crazy and throwing it in the freezer. So there, you should see our freezer right now. We have one of the stand-up freezers, the big, you know, in our basement that you could fit. I don't know. We fit a lot of fish in there when my husband would go fishing, but it is full of yarn right now. And I decided to bag all of my projects that were like in their queues coming up next in their own bags with their pattern. That way, out of the freezer, they're okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, if it's on my yarn wall that I've showed before, then it can stay out. But anything else has to be in the freezer or in its own little bag together. So that, those, okay, so I'll show you what I am gonna make. I'm gonna make a couple of these street, street styler hat. And I, so what I'm going to do, what I did actually is I found these great bags at Ikea and put the pattern and the yarn. I'm going to make a camel colored one and that one's for my husband, but I am going to make those hats, but I put the yarn with the project. And then this is the C train hat and it's out of Wolf of Far, but I only have Wolf of excuse me, wool folk loft. So I'm gonna use that yarn. But then, you know, you just, you can go, go get your, your yarn with your pattern. Now this, I am gonna start sooner than later. It is the classic by Espostra Co. It's a free pattern. Melissa designed this one. And I bought the Sonder yarn. And I am so excited. This is their mohair version. That's Halo. I just love that deep, deep blue. And then this is morning coffee. Why do I always, oh, Sunday morning. This is the fingering weight Sunday morning Sonder yarn. I always wanna call morning coffee. <laughs> the colors. Hmm. It's their navy, and this is, where are my glasses? Cover to cover. This is cover to cover, deep blue. And then this is 
rock it. Let's rock it. So I'll hold those two together for the classic. I'm really excited. I am going to start on that. It's also on size seven needles, which is really why I bought it and wanted to make it. Uh, I, sorry, this is making a lot of noise. And you have to remember to zip the top of your Ziplocs if you do that, <laughs> if you have any moth problems. And then this, so Jackie from Caddy Jack's Knits had my perfect style of a sweater, just a simple, it was the Colette tee. And she did it in a mohair, which was really beautiful. And the pattern, sorry is it's just a simple little tea so i love just the simplicity of that and i had some yarn from a stephen west shawl that i had started it was a brioche and i had a mistake in it i showed it on one of my podcasts and i never frogged i never fixed it and i would have had to frog it and rip it all the way back so i actually Last week, ripped it out, and I am going to try to make that. I don't know if I have enough yarn, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so it's out of yarn that I bought in Barcelona. And this Boca, I've showed this before with the other shawl, but and then I'm just going to hold those two together instead. It was a two-stranded, uh, two-color brioche. So I'm excited to, I did a little gauge swatch to see what those two would look like together instead. These are my gauge swatches. They're not very big, but I think it'll be really beautiful. I don't know when I'm gonna start that one, but I also put that in the bag. Ready, so that's down the line. That's down the line, thank you. But I love that sort of organization now so I can just go after I finish something and just grab the bag and it's all there together um okay I'm going to share the book that I absolutely ate up while I was healing from you know emotionally and physically um if you've watched the podcast before the prior podcast my mother had passed away in January so, and then two weeks later, I had broken my wrist. Anyone going through anything needs to read this book, Wintering. It is so beautifully written. And in some weird way, it just gave me confirmation to that, you know what? It's okay to just be in the stillness. And... I don't think many people actually feel good about doing that, but ah, uh, once you know that it's okay, it just, and I don't know why this book needed to tell me that, but, but it did. But it's the power of rest and retreat in difficult times. It, it could not, and you don't have to winter in the winter. So the big joke then was to my sisters, you know, I'm wintering. I would say, you know, they would call me and say, you know, are you going out this weekend? No, I'm wintering. And, you know, Steve would want to go to dinner or something. I'm still wintering. So I, it just was like the excuse I always needed. Um, I'll read you a little bit. Wintering is a poignant and comforting meditation on the follow periods of life, times when we must retreat to care for and repair ourselves. Catherine May thoughtfully shows us how to come through these times with the wisdom of knowing that, like the seasons, our winters and summers are the ebbs and flows of life. Ah, and at the end, she talks a little bit about knitting and uh, about how, you know, in 2007, study by Harvard Medical School found that knitting can lower blood pressure as much as yoga and can also help relieve sufferers of chronic pain by releasing serotonin. In 2018, the charity Knit for Peace conducted research on the health benefits of crafting and found that it had a range of benefits for their members, including maintaining mental sharpness, 
helping smokers to quit smoking and reducing loneliness and isolation in the elderly. I mean, we all know that, but it just is always good to, you know, sort of read it, but it is just, I, I cannot, if you're going through anything or, you know, you just need confirmation that when you're not up for, for some reason, you're just a little down in the dumps, it's okay. Down in the dumps is good because spring always comes after winter. Ebbs and flows of life. Um, all right, I am going to show you a tiny bit. It's in this book if you don't want to watch. <laughs> but the last episode, I talked about how my queue on Ravelry was just a wreck and how I needed to organize it. So I, since I wasn't knitting, I needed to still somehow involve myself with knitting. So I went through my queue and then I printed patterns and I glued them on the pages of this book. And I am uh, going to just use this as my reference and I'll add to it and I'll cross things off or I'll peel them off the paper. But I started, I had to start on the other pages because I filled my book. So not everything will be knit in here, but uh, I will share some of the things that I put. I'll show you like five, because I had so many requests that they would love to see. So the Ola sweater by Georgia Fibers, and that's on a lace weight yarn. And that's on size six, US six needles. Let's see, on the C-Train hat, that's the hat I have. That uses size seven and eight needles, and that calls for a wolf oak far. So that's a little bit heavier than a, it's a heavy worsted weight. Oh, but she uses far and shibui. Um, so cloud so yeah it's a worsted and a uh a mohair and then Callisto I'm sure you've seen that that's on size five needles so that's out of a sport weight and I have my pages started the Anna pullover that's out of the kit couture so those are sold as kits those are US two and a half and fours, so that went down on my list a little bit. I was doing my research. The Billy Pullover. I saw a couple podcasters make this and love it. And I, of course, would love it in just the natural color. I've been wanting to find a fisherman sweater. This sort of seemed to fit the bill. So it's the Bully Billy Pullover. It's a worsted weight yarn out of size six and seven needles. Piece of silver, it's fingering weight yarn. So that was going way down on the list because anything on too fine of a needle. Uh, the the Lune, I know you've seen a lot of these. This um, shawl, been very popular, US fives. I love that, and, and I love those colors. The Cuffle, oh wait, I forgot, the Cozy Classic Raglan. That is a fingering and a DK held together on sevens. So that's just a, a Cozy Classic Raglan, just like it says. <laughs> I love, love, love the Cuffle. I actually ordered yarn for the Cuffle, and I ordered those two colors in the Hudson West. And I had to send back the, um, the blue is not that blue. It literally, I could not, I thought it was black. And I, it was just so dark. It's called Midnight. So I guess I should have known, but I then ended up um, exchanging it for gray. I just don't have it yet. So that's on a size seven needle. We're still waiting on, I'll show you one more because you might be getting bored. And then I'll show you more next time. Oh, here, I'll show you two more. Uh, boar, 
I don't know how to pronounce the designer's name. Tang, Tanya Hodne, Tanya Hone. And I only wrote worsted weight yarn. Didn't write anything else, but I'm sure that's like a size five or six needle. Uh, this is Saga by Britt Marie Bramer. So you can see, I kind of like that classic look. So this might not ever get made because this looks a lot like the classic, which I'm gonna start. And this is on size six needles. Okay, I don't wanna bore you with more, but I'll show you over the next several podcasts, uh, some other ones that I've added. And yeah, I think that's all. So I so appreciate you guys hanging in there and stopping by. And I hope you're knitting on something that you love. Like I always say, if you're not, then find something that you love. There are too many wonderful things out there to knit. And thank your hands tonight. Or right now, just look down and give them a big thank you. And uh, yeah, until next time. All right, remember, you always have a friend to knit with. Take care. Bye.